there has been something developed that is going to get you a really good estimate at your VO2 score that I think you should do. I really do. I think that, that it's worth your time. It's only 12 total minutes, believe it or not, that's all that it takes. And I'm gonna take you through it here today. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. We're here today with a brand new Cabral concept. This is our training Thursday and high performance health episode of the week. We're gonna be going over how to figure out and do your own VO2 max test in order to be able to figure out your own cardiovascular fitness level. Why does this even matter? Well, one of the biggest factors in terms of aging that means basically lifespan, how long you're gonna live, as well as health span is actually your cardiovascular fitness score. And this matters because what happens is as your cardio level or your aerobic level goes down and down and down, not only are you weaker at pumping blood through the body from the legs back up, so edema, blood pressure issues, but also you need to keep that heart healthy and strong. When you look at the number one factor, Really, I mean, the through the top three, for reasons for death, it's essentially atherosclerosis, it's high blood pressure, it's stroke. And so when we look at those, we say, okay, these are hardening of the artery-based issues. And improving your overall aerobic-based function doesn't mean that strength training is not amazing. It is. There are different tests for that that we teach you know, inside of HPH2, but it's so important that you understand your VO2 test. Now, this has always been a hindrance to people to figure out what their actual score is because you would typically have to go to a specific fitness center, physical therapy studio, et cetera, uh, to be able to figure out your exact score. And while those lab tests are actually, yes, more accurate, there has been something developed that is going to get you a really good estimate at your VO2 score that I think you should do. I really do. I think that, that it's worth your time. It's only 12 total minutes, believe it or not. That's all that it takes. And I'm going to take you through it here today. It's called the Cooper test. So the Cooper test is an at-home way to gauge your VO2 max level, and I'll talk about what that is in just a moment, in order for you to understand your cardiovascular or cardiorespiratory fitness score. CRF is what we'll call it, cardiovascular respiratory fitness. And again, the reason that's so important is not only how long a predictor of how long you're gonna live, it's not the only factor, but it's what we call one of the overall 10 uh, vitality tests or mortality tests, but it also talks about quality of life. I mean, if you, are low in endurance, low in energy, low libido, all the lows that we talk about, it's, it's likely that your VO2 max is low. And so let's just dive right into it. And then I'll talk a little bit more about it as we start to move through the show. Okay, so the very best way to understand, why don't we go through that first? We'll go through, you know, what is actually VO2 max. So when we're looking at VO2 max, we're talking about the efficiency at which the body is able to utilize oxygen, right? The way that it's able to increase heart rate in terms of how much stress that is on the body. And I think that, again, that that's an important factor because we're, we're looking at, and specifically what VO2 max means is it's the maximal oxygen uptake and it measures the maximum amount of oxygen a person can utilize during intense exercise. So the more oxygen you can utilize, the better your cardiovascular fitness. And why this matters as well is because it's gonna affect everyday activities too. Think about like walking up a flight of stairs or you know, just even going outside, playing a game of uh, tag or you know, basketball with your kids. That VO2 max does matter. And the thing is, it's a slow decline with aging unless you work to keep it. And then it will not decline and you can actually improve it no matter what your age is and it also has a factor in anaerobic fitness as well, meaning like ATP, adenosine triphosphate, the amount of energy you can produce even in short bursts of energy. So don't, uh, we're not confusing this with lactate threshold and your ability to push through certain strength anaerobic-based exercises, but it is for overall quality of life. And I do mean that, like everything gets easier. Walking gets easier, uh, you know, 
uh, jogging, playing a game of basketball, walking up the stairs, like everything gets easier if you improve your VO2 max. Okay, so let's get right into it. It's actually very straightforward as to how you can perform this specific test, uh, again, called the Cooper test. And there's two ways to do this. I'm going to go with the 12-minute fitness test today. And the reason is, is that this is typically for beginners and it's the best place to start. There's actually two tests that you can run. There's the 1.5 mile run. And I'm going to talk about that on tomorrow's show on the Friday review. So stay tuned to that. If you're someone that can run faster than an eight minute mile, stay tuned for tomorrow's show. But all the practitioners listening to this and and general public, most people can't run faster than an eight minute mile. So I don't want to confuse anybody with the two different uh, ones that you can run. Run the 12 minute fitness test developed by Kenneth Cooper, uh, MD. This is all the way back in 1968, still super valid as an estimator. And what I'm going to do, so the research, uh, the takeaways, the three big takeaways, the graphs, as well as the fitness calculator, it's all done for you. It's all free. Head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2659. You might want to just bookmark that because when you do your 12 minute test, then this page is going to enable you to figure out what your VO2 estimate is. All right. So this is all you need. The very best way to do this is on a flat surface. The very best way to track it and the easiest way is if there is a local track in your city like a a track and field, right? So typically a track, at least for high school uh, and college, if you're able to get on it, is a quarter of a mile. So that's standard. That's 400 meters approximately, right? And so that's important because this test is actually gauged in meters or kilometers, but I'm going to give you the conversion here today uh, on the episode. So why this makes it easy is once around a track is 400 meters, meters, right? So if you go around that track four times, you've now done essentially a mile. And so that's the way to look at it. It's the easiest way. But honestly, it doesn't matter. As long as you have a flat surface, like through your neighborhood or wherever it is, um, you just don't want hills because that's going to slow down your time. So uh, flat surface, that's it. And then all you need is a stopwatch. And you can typically just use your own watch, right? Like that's the easiest thing with a little timer. And you're just going to set it, time for 12 minutes, uh, and then once it beeps, okay, then you stop your test, and you're going to want to be able to record how far you ran. So you might say, well, I have no way to gauge how far I ran if I'm not on a track. Now, there are apps that you can download, like Map My Run. Uh, there's a lot of apps out there, but that's one that you may want to look into. Maybe I'll try to find another one for the Friday Review tomorrow as well. But for sure, uh, Map My Run is one that I've been using for quite some time, and there's a bunch out there. So you just want to be able to gauge your specific distance. Now, the other nice thing is that if you're wearing a Garmin watch like I am, or you're wearing an Apple watch, those are going to track it right down to the tenth of a mile, and so you can just use that. Honestly, like a lot of people have a smartwatch, and you're going to be able to use that. If not, an app on your phone, and you're good to go, and these apps are typically completely free, right? Or at least they have a free trial, and so you can use it for a week and then just cancel it if you'd like. Okay, so let's get right down to it. This is not complicated, but it's super effective, and that is why I want you to be able to do it. Um, especially if you're going through high performance health right now. So all I need you to do is this. I want you to warm up. So this is what most people miss during this test, and they end up getting a slower time um, because they have to start out slower. So warm up for five to 10 minutes. That's all that you need, especially if you're not someone who runs like three plus miles, right? Like if you don't typically run, well, you you just do a brisk walk for five minutes or so, and then a a slow jog for another five minutes. That's all that you need. Don't wear yourself out. Now, once you're warmed up, okay, click the timer, and all you're going to do is run without stopping. But I have to give you a couple caveats, and that's that if you are not a runner, start out with a jog. You need to be able to maintain this for 12 minutes. So if you're not used to running 12 minutes, you need to start with just a jog, see how you're doing, and you can always increase the speed. What you don't want to do is start out running so fast, and then you have to stop, 
or whatever it might be. Now, the truth is this, is that even if you have to stop, just count those miles. Like that's all that you're doing, right? So, or kilometers. So if you um, finish one mile, right, in the 12 minutes, okay, then you ran one mile. Like that's, that's it. Like it's just, it's simple enough it's straightforward, but what I like people to do is to be able to pace if possible the whole time. Now, a runner will know how to do this, and you know what? Guess what? They're going to have a higher VO2, right, because they're used to running, but that's the nice thing is like you can actually improve your VO2. No matter it is, what it is right now, you know that if you started to get into a little bit of a cardiovascular program, whether it's cycling, swimming, biking, um, cycling and biking are the same. One might be indoors, one might be you know outside, uh, or jogging, running, that you're going to be able to improve your VO2 max. And truthfully, a VO2 max is sometimes done on a bike you know, as well. So different ways of looking at this, but then what I'm going to have you do is go over. So what you're, it's always going to be 12 minutes. That's never going to change. That is not a variable that changes. The only variable that changes to find your estimate is your age, and then, because it'll change each year, of course, and then the miles or kilometer, kilometers that you've run. And so then you're going to go over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2659. You're going to click on the 12-minute run uh, VO2 calculator. You're going to type in your age, your um, male or female. You're then going to type in your... 12-minute uh, run, because that's the test that we're doing, so you need to type in that. And then just how many miles you ran. That's it. So if it says 1.0, great, you're putting in one mile. If it was 0.7, you know you put in 0 0.7. If it was 2.1 miles, you put in 2.1 miles. And then if it's in kilometers or yards or even meters, uh, it has a distance uh, calculator for those. So super simple. So Let's say that you ran, uh, let's say that you are 40, let's just say you're 47 years old and you ran 1.5 miles in 12 minutes. Okay, so then we're going to calculate that and it says that your VO2 max is about a 42.7. The average population at 47 years old is 38.7, so you're above average population. Your score is basically in the 75th percentile and your rating is good. But what I'm also going to do is give you then a chart that shows you what good is, what high is, what athlete is, and then what elite is. So you can see from that 40 to 49 range for a male, the good is 44 to 47. And so this individual, you know, just makes the good rating, uh, depending on the chart that you look at. And then high is going to be 48 to 53 for that age range. Then athlete is 54 to 60. And then the elite is 61. So if we just kind of use this same metric, let's say that this individual ran six-minute miles and they ran uh, two miles in 12 minutes. Okay, now their VO2 max is in the 100th percentile. And it's a 60.7. And this is now putting them in the elite category right there, right? So you can see how you'll be able to improve. This person, I don't know what they were running. What were they running? Eight-minute miles? Yes. So they went from an eight-minute mile, and they improved it to a six-minute mile. Now, obviously, that's fast. But they went from good to elite. Like, you don't need to be elite. It's nice to be in the high category. You don't even need to be in the athlete category. But another chart will show you, and this is really important as well, is that, let me see if I can open this, and I'll probably link this one up too. I'll, I'll link all these charts up. But the 10-year survival rate of the uh, poor, if you're in the poor rating, is about 77%. If you are in the fair category, it's 91%, meaning like 77% of the people, like 30% of people won't be here, unfortunately, uh, with that poor score. Then it goes in, in 10 years from now, then it goes to 91. Then for good, it's 93.5. For excellent, it's 96. And for superior or elite, again, however you want to look at it, 97%. And that's regardless of age. So again, you have to understand is that aging is more than one metric. It's more than your cholesterol number. It's more than your blood pressure number. It's more than you know what your high sensitivity CRP is, right? It's more than any one of these things. And so what we like to do is share with you all of the different factors that go into aging, and this is specifically one of them. And if you don't like your score, 
honestly, you can improve it in a pretty simple and straightforward manner by gradually increasing your cardiovascular capacity, which means simply being able to run a quarter mile this week, next week, you know, another minute, and then each week maybe running one more minute. That's really it. And then you're improving it. And once you get to a certain threshold, 20 to 30 minutes of sustained cycling or jogging, whatever it may be, then it's trying to improve the actual intensity. And that's, I, I could, I have a bunch of shows in this, but that's honestly, not everything has to be complicated, right? Like we can keep things simple and you have your lifetime in order to improve. But in order to improve, you need to get started. So wherever you are right now, take your estimated VO2 by doing the Cooper 12 minute jog, run, walk, whatever you want it to be, going then to stephencabral.com forward slash 2659 for all the free measurements and you'll be able to take it from there. Then stay tuned tomorrow and I'll give you the 1.5 mile test, which is people that are a little bit more advanced uh, that are able to run faster than a eight minute mile. Hopefully today's show was helpful. Again, let me know if there's any other questions, uh, but this was a big one from High Performance Health. It's one of the 18 biomarkers of aging, and I wanted to do a, a deeper follow-up uh, for that community as well. If you want to learn more about High Performance Health, just head on over to highperformancehealth.org. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of your day. I'll talk with you tomorrow. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.